morning, BBC Houston. It's good to see you this morning. We know that it's raining, but we're so excited that you guys made it here. You're here at church ready to worship. So would you rise to your feet this morning? Father God, we thank you that you have allowed us to come here safely to worship together as a church. Father, we want to sing about your love. We want to give you this time of praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Grace for me. Break every chain, break every chain. 
to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Sing it out, there is power. There is power in the name of Jesus. that is in your name would break the chains that have us bound. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your son that died on the cross to give us a life of freedom that we no longer have to live in sin, God, but that we can live a victorious life with you. We thank you, God, because you call us upon deep waters and you want us, Lord, to draw near to you to trust you, to believe in you. We call upon your name this morning. You call me out upon the waters, the great unknown, where feet may fail. And there I find you in the mystery, in no my faith will 
Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Dear God, Lord, this morning, Lord, we give a hand clap of praise to the risen King. Lord, for you have spoken, you have spoken of it, you have spoken into our life, God. And Lord, these are words that are still alive. They still are in existence and they have motion and movement to them. And Lord, we thank you, Lord, that this morning as we join with our brothers and sisters, not only here in this building, in this house, God, but around the world as we praise you, God, may you be exalted into the heavens, God, into the clouds, God, Lord. May our voices paired with our brothers and sisters, God, in declaring that you are a great God and great are your plans and your thoughts for us. Great are your plans for our country. Great are your plans for our family. Great are your plans for your individual life great are your thoughts and your plans for us we receive we acknowledge we reply yes lord again and amen in the name of jesus christ we say amen amen you may have a seat it is good to be in the house of the lord it is good to praise god with you we want to welcome those of you who have joined us for the very first time here at vbc houston and online we're so privileged to have you and uh, we're so glad to um to welcome you into our service uh, we're about to enter in a time of giving and uh, if you're a guest what we ask of you is in the front seat of your your uh, the back pockets in front of you if you will just fill out the connection card with your name and an email or phone number we would love to stay in contact with you and if there are some needs there's some check items there you can check and if there's a need we would love to respond or answer any questions you may have. So we're so glad to have you with us. And uh, we hope that you'll continue to just press in, sit with us, enjoy the rest of the service. We really believe that uh, these moments are, are life-altering, life-changing moments. And we believe that you have made a good decision today. And it is a good thing that you are here today. Now we are gonna spend our, uh, we're gonna continue our worship through our tithes and offering. This is what I always say is a Christian privilege as we give or we give beyond what we uh, have uh, committed to already. Uh, and if you're a guest, you don't quite understand this, you absolutely can abstain. But this is the time which the church begins, you know, we sow into what God is doing. We, we walk in faith and walk in obedience, but also we sow into the things that he's doing. And in this past year, the Lord has done much. In 20, 2019, we're expecting even greater things. And so if you, you have your tithing or you can go online at vbchouston.com, you can go ahead and uh, click uh, on the... Uh, donate or give button and that will be your opportunity to give as well but if you will hold on to your tithes and offering and let's go ahead and let's pray and give that to the Lord God we are so grateful for the opportunity God to give to participate in the things that you're doing help us God to see where you are at work that we may join you God help us God Lord to um, Lord as as those who give God Lord bless them Lord, let them, God, experience the joy of giving. Let them experience the joy of what it is, Lord, to see the blessing that comes about from that. Lord, we thank you, Lord. We're, we're so grateful what you have given us. Lord, we ask that you would bless what is to receive and cause it to multiply and bear much fruit. And as we always pray, we ask, Lord, that you will give us the wisdom and the discernment, God, to know what we are to do with the finances, God, so that we can move VBC Houston and, Lord, your kingdom forward. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, uh, as the uh, ushers come by to take up your tithes and offering, I have just a few announcements to relay to you. Uh, of course, it's uh, the end of the year has passed, and we want to thank, for, uh, thank you for those of you who gave. Uh, if you need a contribution statement, uh, you can email info at vbchouston.com. Just say, I like my 2018 contribution, and we can have that sent out to you. And now, even more importantly now, March the 3rd, please put that down on your calendar, pull out your iPhone, March 3rd, Sunday, either 9 or 11 o'clock service. The, we are so grateful for what God has done in 2018. We want to recount, we want to share, just highlight a few of the, we highlight the victories. Highlight it according to the victories, the victories in what God had called us to do at the beginning of the year. And we want to reaffirm and affirm what God has done through VBC Houston, and that means you. And we want to just rejoice together. And also, we want to sow the vision for 2019. There's opportunities for us to really make headway into our city. Whether it is uh, just minister to family, they're vulnerable in the hospital with their children. I think that's something that is so fresh off of mind right now. I think there's a great opportunity for that. 
whether it is to give so that um, we can make the packages or how, be a part of a team that goes out to pray and just to, just to put a smiling face to that. How about the opportunity to impact a nation, shape, uh, to shape a whole nation, to potentially influence some of the youngest minds, but also the most influential minds in a country and for the next 10 to 15 years. We have a potential to do that. Or, or how about to go about throughout our city or throughout different, in, to different countries to share the message that so was able to change your life and my life. Do you still remember that message? Because I hope you still hold on to the message of hope. I remember that day as if it was yesterday. I remember the peace that surpasses all understanding. And I want to share that with others as well. Do you still remember that moment? I hope you will because you, you need to engage in that again. Because in order for us to fulfill the mandate God has for us, it doesn't just require well planning. It requires intentional hearts. And that includes you. And so we hope that you would join us March 3rd hear the message, and I will get the chance to give the report and share and uh, to, to pull in the, 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 the vision that Pastor Khan has and to share it, to see uh, how it connects to what we're doing. So March 3rd, if you will, either 9 or 11 o'clock service. Now, if you will, we we'll continue in our series, He Did That. If you will, please welcome up Pastor Samuel Wynn. Good morning, church. Wow. Good morning. It's so good to have you guys here. I'm so glad and privileged to be able to share the message today. And there's just something about this series that has me worked up. There's something about this series with the, just the tagline in itself, he did that, that has me pushing for an, a better understanding of what he actually did. See, a lot of people, they hear and they read and they understand some things of the Bible, but we never proclaim those things and saying, yeah, my God did that. We always say things along the lines of, yeah, I know that Jesus can do this, and I know that he can do this. No, no, no. Declare it and say, he did that. See, whenever we think about God's love, and we think about what it took for him to show us the greatest act of love, and when he was put on the cross, he didn't just die on the cross. He did that. And I put an exclamation point behind that, and everything that I say today is that he did that, is that I'm declaring with my mouth, I'm declaring with my understanding of who God is in my life, that he did that. But the, but the question that you ask yourself this morning is, what is he doing in your life? Where are you seeing God's footprint in your life? Because I'm seeing it in every aspect of every part, of every single bit of my life, I know that he did that every step of the way. So last week, I got to speak the message about how Jesus was washing his disciples' feet. And I keep thinking about that message this whole entire week. I keep thinking about it because in my mind, I see Jesus kneeling down and washing his disciples' feet, knowing good well that two of them are going to turn their backs on him. Yet he still did that. Yet he still got down on his knees and washed their feet, not caring one bit of what they're going to do but understanding that they will understand one day. They will understand in a couple days in, during that time why he was doing it and why he still showed love no matter what. And, and the crazy thing, and I spoke with the youth on Sunday after I spoke that message, and I want to share it with you guys. In, in my opinion, when I think about, so out of all things, Jesus, why did you wash their feet? Why? And, and why did you choose to do it like that? Why? Why? And, and I kept thinking about why. And, and this is my thought. Is that before, they, before people used to enter into people's houses back then, they would wash their feet. It was a daily kind of thing. It was like you, you go from town to town, your feet are dirty, and then you go into a house and you wash your feet. I think, it's like, I think they, must, they, they must have been Asian. You know, I said that because Asians take off their shoes before they walk into the house, right? So I, I thought, man... Why would Jesus do this? Why would he wash their feet? Why was this the act of love that he showed before everything was about to go down? Why was that? And then I think to myself, and, and, and I'm reminded by this is something that they do on the regular, and, and, and what it came down to is this, is that Jesus wanted to show his love to them and something that was going to stick with them forever. And why was that? Is because every time someone washed their feet after Jesus did it, they're going to remember what he did for them. Every single time they get their feet washed, they're going to remember Jesus did that for me. 
It's going to be a remembrance of what he did and that act of love that he showed. And so every time, he, every time they get their feet washed, they're going to remember that exact moment of what happened. Because you know when he died on the cross, and, and, and after that, they still had to get their feet washed. It was still a regular thing. It was like brushing teeth back then, or now. It's, it's a regular thing. And so every time they got their feet washed, they were going to remember, that was the act of love that Jesus showed me. That was the act of love that Jesus showed me. He could have easily prayed for them. He could have easily just talked to them. No, but he showed an act of love that was going to be remembered forever. That was going to be remembered forever. And, and, and then I think about this week's message about the greater love that he did. We think about him dying on the cross, and that was his final act of love for us. That was his biggest act of love for us. And, and now every time I see a cross, and every time I think about a cross, I think of his love. Every time I, I, I hear the word Jesus, I think of a cross. Every time I hear or, or see a cross, I think of what Jesus did. I think that it's so symbolic that we're able to see an object or see something like a cross and, and understand that was the greatest act of love. And when we see a cross or, or when somebody asks or, or, or says something like, what is a symbol that represents Christians? And then a lot of people will say a cross. And that was kind of like what Jesus left behind. It was like a, a symbol for us. And when people see it, they automatically can understand there was a sacrifice of love. And that was the greater act of love that he showed that day. And, and for me, whenever I dug deep a little bit and I, and I was looking at what he, Jesus was saying before he left and, and what he was teaching his disciples and the greater love that now we are able to show because we have received, it changed everything. It changed everything because now whenever I read that point of time when Jesus was talking to them, or even up until the point in time where Jesus is going to get crucified on the cross, I understand the greater act of love that he's showing. And it's from every step of the way, even the quiet journey that he took himself from, from going up into the mountain to get crucified, up on that hill to get crucified. It was, a, it was a silent thing for him during that time because he was showing that act of love all the way up. He was showing that act of love all the way up. And, 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 I, and I think about all the things that people were saying and all the negative things that people were booing and, and shouting and spitting and, and saying all these things, and yet they don't even understand the man that they're booing and, and cursing at and spitting at is somebody that's about to show them love like they've never understood before. The greater act of love, yet, yet the moment that somebody says something to us, we don't want to show love. Yet the moment that somebody does something wrong to us, it's not the first action to think, let me show them love. Or the moment that somebody does something wrong to us, it's not, let me show them love. It's, man, who are you to do that to me? You think you're better than me? And yet we let our human self surface up. But don't we have Jesus in our life? And God, and God sent his son to, to fix that exact thing in our lives. And that's the greater love that he showed. The sacrifice that God was willing to make for us to bring Jesus Christ down here, to die on the cross so that we can understand that we can love just like how he loved. That it's possible. See, the, the, the God that I serve, he knows how to love me in every aspect that I need. He knows how to support me. He knows how to encourage me. He knows how, how, he knows how to be there for me when I need him. See, we just got done with Valentine's Day. Right, and Valentine's Day may, may have been a, a day of reflection for you guys or, or time of, of memories. And for my wife and I, we, we, we literally sat down and we just talked about, man, all the funny things that have happened throughout the years and, and all, the, all the great things that have happened and now we can't wait for things to come. And it, it, wasn't, it wasn't a, I think this Valentine's Day, I would say, was a little different. It wasn't a all oh, mushy-gushy, like I, I love you kind of thing. It was like, God, thank you for bringing both of us here. And I don't know why it was like that. No, I, I, I was going to think it was going to be different. But this year, for some odd reason, I was showing my wife love, I think, in every aspect that I could. And, and I don't think that she was, I don't think she was expecting it either. And honestly, in my heart too, I wasn't expecting to do everything that I did either. You know, and, and I, I cook on the regular and all these kind of things and, and flowers and cards. Those are the regular. But to me this year, something felt special about it. Something felt special because every aspect that I did, I did it out of love. And I truly did it out of love. While I was, while, while I was going 
to Walmart or HEB when it was crazy and hectic, and I thought either it was like a hurricane or something was going to happen. I mean, that's how many people were in HEB, and I was just going for some chocolate-covered strawberries, and it felt like I was going for like every item I needed before the world was going to end. I mean, it felt that crazy inside. There were people screaming, and people were running around, and carts were be like being pushed against each other, and I was like, I'm just here for some chocolate, you know, and I waited in line probably 20, 30 minutes just for some chocolate, and I was like, no, but it, this is worth it. This is worth it. And I was like smiling the whole time. I was like, I can't wait for her to get these shots. Like, she's probably going to love it. It's going to be awesome. And then, I, and then I got to HEB, and then I was like, man, these flowers, are, they're, I don't know if they're that good. It's, so then I was like, let me go somewhere else. Let me try to find somewhere else. And then I, I happened to go to like a, a we, in my neighborhood in Pearland, we have a different type of Walmart. It's like a neighborhood Walmart, but it's smaller. So it's just groceries and then other things. And for some reason on Valentine's Day, they had like a florist on the inside, and they were making flowers, and it was really nice. And then I looked at the price, and then I was like, it, it, it's worth it. I, I love her. It's worth it. It's worth it. This, what a sacrifice. I love it. It's worth it. And, and then even when I grabbed those flowers and I looked at it, I, and I looked at the price, and it was a high price, but then I was like, you know what? She deserves even better. So I grabbed something a little bit even more expensive, and I said, it's worth it. It's worth it. It's worth it. And I actually did it out of joy, and I actually did it out of love, not saying that any other year I would have been like, oh, gosh, is this really worth it? It was more like, I, I was like, I'm just going to do the best for this year. I'm just going to do the best. And I, I couldn't understand in my mind why. And, and, and when I was preparing my message, I, I was like, God was like, do you not understand that I've helped you show the greatest act of love in every aspect this, this week? And, and, and it, wasn't even st it wasn't even just that. So then she, she, my, my wife, she works a really late schedule, and she gets home at about 11 o'clock at night. And so I always do this, and I always text her, and I'm like, hey, where are you? Like, are you on the way home yet? Because I want to cook the meal so that it's hot and ready on the plate when she walks through the door. You know, and, and, and I wanted to do that. And so I don't know what happened. Like, she, she took a really long time to get home. And so on our iPhones, we have a thing called Find My Friend. And so <clears throat> I look on the phone, and I see Find My Friend, and I see that she's at Kroger. And, I'm, and I text her. I go, I know what you're doing. Just come home. And she laughs, and she goes, man, you caught me. And I was like, I was like it's already like 1230. You usually get home at 11. You know what I mean? And so I, I knew that we were both trying to show each other an act of love. And when she got home, I knew she wasn't expecting it. There was dinner. There was flowers. There was, there was a card that I wrote. And when I wrote the card, I mean, this was the first time I ever wrote a card, and I was crying while I was writing the card. And, like, I had to, like, watch out for my tears because it was smearing the ink and everything. And I was like, man, I just bought the most expensive card I could find, too, and I just smeared my ink everywhere. But I was, like, happy and joyful, and I was like, hurry up and get home. Like, I can't wait for you to see these things. And when I get to the car, <coughs> I walk out of the car, and I'm like, hey, how's it going? Like, what took you so long? You know, jokingly, and we both laughed because she knew that I already knew that where she was at. And... I was like, oh, you know, like, let's go inside and everything. And I had the lights off. And then I turned the lights on. And she was like, what? And she was, like, surprised. And just seeing that pure joy uh, and that smile on her face, it was worth it. And I share all this not to brag about myself or anything like that because I know somebody in this room probably went past that and did more, you know. But I'm just saying that because I was able to show love to my wife in every aspect that I could, and, and I tried to do my best, and at the same time, I was reminded that God gave me her, and I was reminded that she was the gift that God gave me, and when I think about the gift that God gave us as Jesus, what he did in every aspect of our life, the gift that God gave, gave us meets every single need. Jesus meets every single need in our life. It was like the best, when people say the greatest gift of all, and they, and, they ta and they tag with Jesus, was the greatest gift of all. Anyone can say that was the greatest gift of all, but when you take a second to think that God gave us Jesus, and, at this, and, and he thought about it, he planned it out so well, the best Valentine's gift ever for all of us was that Jesus meets every single need in our life. Every aspect, every, and, and the crazy thing is, this is the gift that doesn't die like flowers, not something that you buy one time, and it, it's, it's a gift that lasts forever, and that Jesus is lasting forever in my life, and I'm so happy about it, and it's the best gift I've ever received, and I knew that, it, I knew that God knew exactly the gift that I needed. He knew exactly what I needed, and he gave me Jesus. 
And when I think about Valentine's Day and then I think about the greater act of love that he showed, it brings me to tears because I know that my Father in heaven thought about me. Because every time this week that Jesus did something, I always looked up and I said, you knew. You already knew. And, and, and it's something that, it's a love, a greater love that's bringing more and more joy into my life. And y'all know I love Jesus. But it's like, I love him so much. And it's not because it's Valentine's either, but it's because I understand that he did that. That he did that for my life and he did that for us. And, and it's something that you can't take lightly and it's something that you should declare. It's something that you should proclaim that he did that. He did that for us. You know, it's, it's something that, for instance, like in sports, right? We think about the Super Bowl or you think about something big that happens or a big tournament or something. And, and, and you think about who the champions are. And everybody talks about the highlights or, man, did you see that? They did that. Or did you see that pass? He did that. Or he was throwing this or he was shooting that or whatever sport it is. And they did that. And people get excited and they get riled up like, man, that was awesome. Did you see that? And, and last night I, I caught just a glimpse of just a little bit of the NBA All-Star game. And I mean, I wanted Curry to win the three-point contest and he lost. But at the same time when I was watching, I was like, man, he did that. He hit 10 shots in a row. Like, that was awesome. He did that. And even though the, he lost... Everyone still talks about him shooting 10 shots in a row, even though he lost. He did that. It was, like, it was crazy. It was something that like, people were like, whoa. But do we have that same statement when we talk about what Jesus did for us? Do we have the same statement? Like, he did that. Like, my, my God did that. When people ask, when people ask the question, why, why do you believe in Jesus? Is, is your response, uh, he loves me? I need him? Or is your response that, or, or is your response, no, my God did that for me. This is the reason why I believe in him, because when I was going through the tough times, my God did that for me. When I was going through the heartache and the heartbreak, or, or when my family was suffering, my God did that. And when you, do, when you can declare that he did that in every aspect of your life, oh, when my finances were tanking, and I asked God, I, God, I, need, to pull, I need you to pull through. I need something, Lord. I need a financial breakthrough. Oh, he did that. When you can understand that the words that he did that means much more, means that you're declaring that you're understanding that you know who your God is and you know what he's capable of doing. See, I just want to take a moment and brag about my, my father from above. I want to brag about Jesus Christ because he shows a love like no other person on this world. He gives a love that never runs out. He gives a love that covers all things in our life, yet at the same time, he loves us no matter what we do in our lives. That's my God. And then it's too quiet in here. That's my God. If that's your God, that's something to be joyful about. See, guys, I'm not here trying to speak this message and not have you guys get a little excited about talking about your God. You can't just come into church and not be excited. What a boring place to be. I'm excited. I want you to meet me at the same level. I'm excited. Because my God that I know that I serve, that I come to this building for, that I drove from my house to come to here, is worthy of my praise, is worthy of talking about. That's my God. You can't just come to church. You can't just drive here and just sit in your chair and not proclaim how good he is. What was the point of you coming? I'll be honest. We don't need another seat. We don't need another person taking a seat. I'd rather have another person in this building giving God praise. That's worth more than 100 people, one person giving God praise and 100 people not. I'll, I'll tell you the truth. My God that I serve is worthy of every single praise in this room and of every aspect of your life. If you can notice that he did something, de declare and proclaim he did that. My God did that to the littlest of things. And, and it may not be little to some parents, but, but your kids being healthy, he did that. Man, I, I'm, I, Elizabeth is not even my baby. It's Zeke and Amy's babe, but I'm like, God, you did that. That was awesome. I haven't even met her yet, and I'm so happy. I see photos of her on social media and all these things. I'm like, God, you did that. I'm so happy. And, and, and when I can, my excitement and my joy that comes from my Lord, I want that for you guys. Because that excitement is what's going to change this world. And, and if you're not excited about God, why should anyone else be excited about him? See, God gave us a scripture, and let's, go, let's look into that right now. I'm going to read out of 1 John 4, 7-12, and it's talking about how God, he now wants us to go out and be a blessing to others. He wants us to go out now and, 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 and tell people about him. He wants us to go out and love our neighbors. 
1 John 4, 7 through 12. Dear friends, let us continue to love one another, for love comes from God. Anyone who loves is a child of God and knows God, but anyone who does not love does not know God, for God is love. God showed how much he loved us by sending his one and only son into the world so that we might have eternal life through him. This is real love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. Dear friends, since God loved us that much, we surely ought to love each other. No one has ever seen God, but if we love each other, God lives in us and his love is brought to full expression in us. Amen. Amen. I know that a lot of us here at church and a lot of us here at VBC, y'all heard what's being spoken out from the pulpit for this year. I want to see this church grow. I have a number in my mind. I know y'all know that number. I know that y'all know I want this youth group to grow, and I, I want this church to grow, and I want our English service to grow, and I want a Spanish service, and, and I, I want all these kind of things. And here's the thing. There's nothing wrong with me wanting it. Why? Because I know it falls in the will of my God. I put my trust in him, and I know that at the end of the day, I can say it now, and I know in, in, a, in a couple of months or in a couple of weeks, or whenever God's time, I'll be able to stand still in the, on this pulpit and say he did that. And I'm going to tell you guys, and I'm going to remind you guys, remember that week after Valentine's Day that I said our church was going to grow? He did that. And I'm going to, I'm going to declare in every single thing that I, I, can, I can stand and say that my God did. The next time I see another group of people come in, or the next time I see another family come in, he did that. See, on Tuesday, we have prayer in English service, and I, and I pray... And I, I've been praying with the church, and we've been praying for our church to grow. We've been praying for new families. We've been praying for new children to come. We've been praying, and every single week he's done it. Every single week he's done it. You know, Brandon, I, I, don't, even, I don't even know if you, you know this, though. You know, there was a week that we prayed, God, I want to see more children and young people at our church. I want to see a growth of young people and children at our church. And then you and all seven or 12 of your siblings walked through the door that Sunday. And I stood and I said, he did that. Every single week I said, God, I want you to bring a new family here to our church. And every single week he's done that. See, a lot of us, we, 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 take, the, we take lightly of the little things that we pray for and we're like, God, can, can, you, can, you, can you do this for me? God, can you... Can you and then sooner or later, what we end up doing is we think we're doing it on our own, yet at the same time, God said, no, 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 I, you asked for it, I'll help you, I'll do it, and then we don't give him praise for it. We don't give him praise for it. See, later on in the message, I'm going to talk about love languages, and I know that most of you guys know about love languages, and one of my love languages is words of affirmation. And, and words of affirmation is something that not only I want to receive, and, and I think that a lot of people don't understand, love languages, God has them too. And he wants words of affirmation from us too. You're the best dad in the world. And he's proud of that. Something that I, something that I say all the time, and my wife knows, and I've grown up always, know, I've grown up always saying this. I said, there's nothing my dad can't fix. And I'm talking about Pastor Khan. And I've always said this. There's nothing my dad can't fix. When I was younger, my friend's bike would break. Hey, bring it to my garage. There's nothing my dad can't fix. Let's do it. And it's funny because, like, even people now to this day, like Roman, he's worked with me a lot at church. And, and, and he even says it. Man, Pastor Khan would know what to do. I'm like, yeah, yeah, he probably would. And, and, and then now that I have a house, and it's my first house I, I, I've ever owned, and I can do stuff to it, you know, I don't know what to do. So that it doesn't matter what time of the day, I'm like, hey, Dad, uh, the toilet broke. And he goes, okay, I'll be on the way. And I look at my wife, told you my dad could do it. And then after that, toilet works, right? And then something's wrong with the sink. I got to call my dad the next day. Hey, Dad, uh, sink's messed up. He goes, all right, I'll see you the next morning. Comes over, fix the sink right away. Told you my dad could do it. And then I don't know how to put together a grill. It's like 100 pieces. So Twana and, and, and my dad put it together. And then I was like, man, my dad did it. And 
I have this understanding and, and a belief and a hundred percent belief that my dad can either do it or he'll find a way to figure it out. That same belief that I have from him is only because I know that the God that he serves and the God that he understands that has saved his life, man, that God lives inside of me too. And the, the father figure that I have on this earth is a resemblance of the father figure I have in heaven, that he can do all things and my father can always fix it. My father can always fix it. Always. He did that. I think about my new house and, and all these projects that I've had in my life and all these ups and downs so far that, that you know, things break and I'm like, but I just bought this house. How did that happen? And, and you know, like, for some reason, you know, I flushed the toilet once in one toilet and then I'm like, 20 minutes later, I'm like, is water still running up there? You know, and, and if you own a house, you know what I'm talking about. And if you, bought a, if you bought a house in the very beginning, like at Newlyweds, you understand. You're like, man. And like everywhere I walk around in the house, I'm like, they missed a spot. Like painting. And, and, and then I look at the trim and I'm like, it's cracked. Like I never noticed these things, you know. And, and to, the fine, to the fine details now. Like I'll walk around, I'll walk around on, 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 the, on the wood floors. And then if my foot touches something just a little bit higher, I'm like, they didn't level that. Man, like every little thing I've noticed. Every little detail I've noticed about my, my life right now. Every single detail I've noticed. And, and, and as much as I am noticing these details about my life, you know that God knows every detail about your life. Every single thing that you've been going through, every single bit of problems or, or mistakes or whatever you're going through, he knows every detail about it. Every detail. I'll tell you this. If you're struggling in this room with your finances, he, he already knows and he's already providing a way. I don't know if you guys know what Zelle is, but God's sending money your way. Digitally, I like that. But he provides. That's the greater love that our God has. See, this message that I want to speak to you is just to reassure you, to understand and know that your God provides for you, and your God loves you. And he did that. If I can speak to you guys about this point, if I can speak to you guys about the fact that our God did that, and that's the greater love that he has to show, as lightly as I'm talking about it and as joyful as I'm talking about it, that's the same thing that people out the, outside of this world need to hear. Nobody wants to hear, you're a Christian, you can't do that. God loves you. He died on the cross so that you wouldn't do that ever again. And they're going to be like, all right, bye, I don't want to hear what you have to say. But if you can, if you can tell them for the little things. And I, sometimes, honestly, I sh, I, I'm, I'm struggling with some things in life, like finances, whatever it is, or or, 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 or conver- I'm, my wife and I, we're struggling. We're, we're fighting or whatever it is. We're not, but I'm just saying, you know, like, and you, and you say those kind of things, but you're like, but we come to God and we ask him to help us and reassurance and in our finances even. And then just those little things, hope. Hope is what my God gives. Hope is what my God has put in my life. And hope is what people need in this world. If you can walk around declaring that he did that in your life, people will start to catch on and understand that your God's real. People understand. See, there, there was something awesome that happened last week. And my wife and I, we've been, we've been, we've been thinking about, there's, there's one person at, at her workplace. And he came up to her and he, and he said, hey, like, why are you so different? Like, why are you so happy? And like, why are you always, you know, thinking positive or, or, and all these kind of things? Like, how are you su- so successful? You're young and all these kind of things. And he was asking genie all these questions and and I've met him before and so it was it was God's right timing for this month for it to have happened because I sat down with him and and we went to go eat at a restaurant my wife and and this gentleman and myself and we sat at that restaurant for three hours three hours of just answering whatever questions he had had questions upon questions and he was just asking he was like like, why do y'all believe in God like that? You know, like, what's your understanding? Like, how, how, what do you mean that you trust in God? You, don't you just put in more work and it happens? These are the kind of questions that he was asking us. He, and he would ask my wife, what do you mean that you wouldn't have been a doctor without God? Couldn't you just work harder and, and, and be able to become a doctor? And then my wife's response was this, it's not me, it's that it was my calling from God. Because I wanted to give up in medical school, and, and, and I, I didn't think I was going to be here. But God had a plan for my life. 
You know, what, what do you mean he had a plan for you? That doesn't make any sense. Plan? A plan for your life? And he, and he, and he, says, he said something along the lines of, like, you believe in, a, in, in the fact that a higher being can have a plan for your life. And we looked at him, exactly. And all we showed him was love, our faith, our trust in our God. And he came last week. My God did that. Somebody that had questions and maybe doubts or maybe needs reassurance of who God is, I spoke to him, declared to, what, to him what my God can do and what my God did, the greater love that he showed me. And when he walked into this building, he was like, oh my goodness, it's so different. He was like, everyone's so nice here. People are really this nice. You know, and then, and then he, he saw me playing drums and he saw my brother singing and he, was like, he looked at my wife and he was like, wow, he's really good. And my wife was like, yeah, I mean, I guess, you know? And I was like, come on, baby, you should have said something, you know? But, but he, was, he was in awe. And now that I know that, I can't wait to tell him the story about me not really knowing how to play drums until God taught me. And he's going to be like, no, you worked hard. No, I really didn't. Like, God really showed me how to play drums. Like, I really had to put my trust in God. No, you put in the hours. No, my hours were put every time I got on stage. No, but you learned from YouTube wasn't out yet, man. No matter what he would say, no matter what, and I can't wait to have this conversation. He actually wanted to come to church today, but he had to go to Louisiana to, to pick up his sister. He, was like, he told my wife, man, I had so much fun at church. I want to come this week, but I have to go to Louisiana. Just knowing that, the joy that he has to want to come to church, my God did that. See, if you're praying for a family member, if you're praying for a sibling, and I don't know why the word sibling came out, so whoever's praying for your sibling, listen to this word, is that my God, our God can do that. Man, if you've got parents that you've been praying for for years, if you've got parents that are fighting right now, if you've got parents that you think are on the brink of divorce, if you've got parents that don't even want to look at each other and they live in the same house, and you just declare, God, do something, I guarantee you, you'll stand on the stage one day and say, my God did that. But that trust and that faith that you have to put inside of him is the same trust and faith that he has put inside of you to go out and tell people that he can do it. That's that same faith. That's that same faith. Look, I know that this word of greater love that he has shown. Greater love. And we always think when we say greater love, we think of the action. The action of what God did. The action of him dying on the cross. And, and, and why is it? Why did it have to be an action? Why? Because it took some effort. Why did it have to be an action? Why did it have to be a visual thing before everybody else? Because he wanted to show the world that this was for everyone. So then when he asks us to go out and love our neighbors, it takes an action. It takes an action. I can't wait to stand on the stage the day that my neighbor comes to church. Every single day. And, and everyone that comes to my house makes a joke about me, like, that my neighbor is my new best friend. But, like, literally, I just moved into the house, and I came over to talk to him, and, like, I talk to him almost every single day. And, and we have, like, this, like, cool thing. That I, I don't know. It's cool. Like, he's my neighbor. Like, this is awesome. I've never thought that I was going to have a relationship with my neighbor where I'm like, dude, let's go hang out. And his name's Eugene. And one day, Eugene, you'll listen to this message. And that's the faith that I have that my God's going to bring him to church. And he has like a curiosity to know because he's met a lot of the church members that have came and helped me move and everything. He's like, wow, that's cool. Do you have a house church? I was like, no, everybody just comes over to my house. But him saying, do you have a house church? So I know he knows something about God but I know he doesn't go to church on Sundays. So I know that one day, and I'm declaring, and I know that y'all can declare with me, one day I'm going to see Eugene here at the church, and I'm going to see his daughter and his wife. I'm going to see it. And I don't know if God wanted to set me up for success. Like, it seemed like it was too easy. I was praying, God, let me make a difference in my neighborhood. And, and we're, you know, at our church, we're, we're, we're going to start something um, soon called Simple Church, and, and we're going to pilot it in the beginning and see if it actually works. But, you know, I, would, I, would, I was thinking to myself in the very beginning, like, is this honestly going to work? Like, do people really want to talk to their neighbors? You know, the, the things that people usually say is like, man, that's the crazy neighbor. Don't go over there. You know, like, they got the yapping dog. Don't go to that neighbor's house. Or, man, that neighbor, he is really particular about his grass. Like, we always have negative things to say about our neighbors. But it's weird because where God put me, every neighbor so far, they've spoken to me. Like, every neighbor so far, I know you're going to be like, duh, it's because it's you. Like, they all have my number already. 
They text me on the, they, a lot of my neighbors text me on the regular, like, hey, we just saw you put that security light up. Where can we get it at? I'm like, Costco, guys, you want to come with me? They're like, yeah, let's set up a day, let's go. And it's weird. It's like, why, God, why is this friendship so easy? Why is this so easy? And God reminded me, you asked. You asked to be a difference in your neighborhood. You asked. I'm making it happen. I told you guys last week that I'm investing my time into God, and he's making things happen. The payout is great. I've asked God, I want to make a difference in my neighborhood. And he goes, well, here you go. Every neighbor has, legit has my number. And they talk to me. They, they see me outside. Like, I, I'm either walking in or whatever. They're like, and, and they, they care for me so much. Like, my neighbor Eugene, he was like, hey, I, was that your truck that was, like, at your house? And, like, you know, we just want to make sure you're okay. And I was like, oh, yeah, that, that was probably one of the youth members. Like, they were probably helping me. And he goes, okay, cool. I just want to make sure that you're, y'all are good. I was like, Wow. This love and care from people of our world that we live in that I don't even, I've never even met, feel like they're my friends. You know, one day he was just outside with his, his daughter and they were looking at the, the red, red moon and he, and I had like five people at the house before I moved in. And he was like, and I came over, introduced everyone. He was like, hey, you know, and he remembers people by name. He remembers people by name. He sees my brother. Hey, Michael. I'm like, okay. And I'm, I'm working on stuff outside my house and he's like, hey, you need some tools? You need some tools? You need a ladder? And I'm like, yeah, I do. Like, you know, this is awesome. And the thing is, I'm not taking it for granted that it's just, I'm not saying, oh, like, it's just probably because I'm friendly, because I talk to him or whatever. No, it's like, literally God is setting this up. And, and why am I sharing this is because we want to grow our church, and we care for our loved ones. Yet if we ask God to do something, are we actually going to put some action behind it? Oh, you want to see your parents come to church. You've been praying for your parents to come. Okay, God's, gonna show, God's already shown his, his love, the greater love to you. How are you going to show it to them? How are you going to show it to them? You know, you, you, come, you come to church, and let's just be real. You come to church, and you're like, man, pastor, I, I, I need prayer. You know, my, my family, they're going through things. All right, let's pray. Let's do something. Let's pray. God, make a way. Let's do something. And the return is on your end, just like the scripture says, to love your neighbors. Your neighbor doesn't have to mean the person that lives in the house left to right. Your neighbor is your loved ones in your life. That's your neighbor. That's your friends. That's your family members. If God has shown us the greater love, we can show it to others. Our family members, our coworkers, people in the cubicle next to us. We can show that love to them just like how Jesus has shown his love to us. Now, Think about our God. Our God doesn't divide, he multiplies. Our God doesn't divide, he multiplies. And if I want this church to grow, and if I have the same heart that I know a lot of you guys have, and we want to see this church grow, there needs to be a multiplication of his love. See, church doesn't just grow. Let me change that. We can get a lot lot of people to come into the church, but can we retain them to understand God's love? Right, we can do an event, and invite everybody to come, and they'll come. But, can, but through those events, are they all going to see God's love if we don't show it? No. But if each one of us knows the greater love that we have been given, and knows the greater love that lives inside of us, and if we show that to every member or every person that comes into this church, they will receive God's love. How do I know that that's true? Because if you show love, and if you understand that God is love, when you show love to people and when you express love to people through God's love and his gestures that he has shown to you and you show it to others, you're showing God's love. A lot of us wonder, how are we going to show people God's love? Or we wonder, how are we going to witness to people? Or what are we going to do? Let me tell you how easy it's been for me. I haven't had to walk around, you know, the neighborhood. Hey, how's it going? I'm your neighbor. I just want to tell you a little bit about Jesus. You know, instead of getting the door shut on me, when I see them outside, I just... I just show joy that's in my life, and I get an opportunity to show love to them somehow, some way, by being friendly, by talking to them, by asking them how their day is, and things like that. And you think, oh, that's just being kind. That's just being nice. Yeah, Jesus is kind. Jesus is nice. Oh, it's, it's hard. It's hard to talk to people about God. I'm telling you. You're a pastor. I'm still human, but it's, you know what to say about God. Do you believe in God? He lives inside of you too. So the next time you see your neighbor, all you have to say, hey, how's it going? You know, I've actually been living in this house for a long time. I haven't even met you yet. I just want to introduce myself. My name is so-and-so. And that's the start of it. That's the start of it. 
Do you know, and I, when I think about the Bible, when I think about Jesus going from town to town, a lot of them didn't even know him. A lot of them just heard about him. A lot of them, they'd never even talked to him. But they knew that there was a man going from town to town. He was healing. He was doing miracles. He was loving on people. He was just a lovable guy to be around. People just wanted to be around him. And, and a lot of us think that, the, the, a lot of us think that it's, it's, a lot, it's a lot of hard work. It's not easy to, to, to reach out to people like we've tried for years. Maybe you've been trying the wrong way. Maybe the reason why you fell in love with Jesus is because he showed you love. Why don't you show that to others? I guarantee you, when you show love to someone, it'll change their life. I guarantee you. Guarantee you. I know for a fact that at the job that I work at, I'm, I'm like the lowest of the low. I'm not a manager. I'm, not any, I'm just at the bottom. But then yesterday, my, my, the general manager looks at me and goes, hey, I got to go away for a charity event. I want you to manage everything. Five hours. And I was like, okay. And he was like, you sure? And I was like, yeah, I'm ready. He goes, okay. He leaves. <clears throat> and I know everybody's, not love language, but I know what everybody's good at. And I know who needs words of affirmation. And I know who needs me to show acts of kindness to. And I know, I, and I've, I've, I've like schemed this in my mind ever since I worked. Because I'm like, I'm going to show these people love somehow, some way. Somehow, some way. And as I took over during that time yesterday, I was like, hey, I need you to do this, and I need you to do that, and I need you to do that. But while I was telling them and leading them, I was like, hey, you know what? I just want to let you know. Like, you're doing a really good job. Like, can you just go and teach this person this because this is what you're good at? And I go up to another guy, and I'm like, hey, I know you're really good at teaching. Uh, do you mind showing this customer what to do and things like that? And then the person at the front, I'm like, hey, you, you, you greet people really nice, but do you mind, like, you know, saying it a little bit louder? Like, show, and they're like, yeah, we can do that. Let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. And then there was like, inside the store, everybody was like, yeah, let's, we can do this. You know, and it ran smooth for five hours. Smooth. They were worried. The manager was worried. So he called the owner and was like, hey, I got to head out. But like Sam's taking over. Like I trust him. And the owner's like, yeah, I trust him too. But I'm still going to show up. And I was like, you really trust me? So I see him pull through. I see him coming to the door. And I was like, what, you didn't trust me? He goes, nah, I trusted you. I was like, okay, cool. He's like, what happened so far? I was like, oh, we made $2,000 so far. He goes, what? I was like, yeah. Easy? Yeah. He goes, okay. And so with them trusting me, I'm able to show love in a different way that I've never been able to show. And I've asked God, God, at this job, do I need to be here to make a difference? Why am I here? You gotta show me over and over and over. If you just ask, if you just ask, if you can show love, you can make the workplace a, 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 a great environment. I know a lot of us, we go to work and we don't, we don't, we don't see that it's a good place to be. Like, oh, I hate going to work. Every morning I wake up, I think of, I want to quit. Oh, I hate working with this person. And you look at the roster of like who you're working with. Oh, not again. Not again. But is that the greater love that's in you talking? But is that the greater love that's in you talking? Because I know and I guarantee that those people that you're like, ah, oh, you can change their life by showing them love. I guarantee you. Why? Because in Jesus' eyes, we were, we were all messed up. We were all messed up in his eyes. He saw that and he knew that, but he loved us still. He loved us still. That's the greater love that I'm trying to express to you, is that he loved us still. The things that you go through, the, 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 the way that you are, the, 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 the things that aren't perfect about you, he loves you still. Oh man, but it's so hard to love some people sometimes. They're just, they're just like this, and they, you know, they don't understand. And at work, they're so slow. Like, you know, and you, you complain, and you complain, and you complain, but you sit here on a Sunday, and you're like, yeah, I want to show love, God. And he's like, this is your perfect opportunity. Let me show you the greater love that I've shown you. Let me show you what it's like. The people that were spitting on me, the people that were cursing at me, the people that were saying mean things to me all up into the journey. In my mind, I still love them. I still love them. I still love them. When I kneeled down to wash the feet of my disciples, and I knew that two of them were going to stab me in the back. I knew two, one of them was going to deny me, and I, and I knew the other was going to turn me in. And I washed their feet, and I still loved them. I still loved them. And I know 
for a fact that was the greater love that they have ever been shown. It was the greater love. We have that same opportunity every single day to show that great love. That's how we can declare that he did that, is that if we're able to show that greater love, that means you understand the greater love living inside of you. But if you don't understand the greater love living inside of you, it's your opportunity today to understand that God loved you so much, even through your, even through your flaws, he loved you that much, and that we're supposed to reciprocate and show that love to the world. That's what he told us to do. I just want to say, if you're a manager in this room, or if you're somewhere higher up, and you have either authority or you can make executive decisions, and you have a team that works under you, use that to your advantage. God has put you in that place. Show love to all those employees. Make it enjoyable for them to work under your shifts. How? How am I going to do that? Show them love. Speak to them. Words of affirmation. Hey, I just want to let you know you're doing a great job. I want to let you know you're doing this, you're doing that, you're doing this, you're doing that. Words of affirmation. We're going to, right now we're going to look down at five love languages. And so I think that sometimes people think that the five love languages only applies to couples. I, I don't think so. It's because... In, as a leader, when you think of the five love languages, you, you, un, you can understand who your team is if you can understand the love language that they have. When people think love language, they, they think of the aspect of like, nah, it's not like that. Love language, for instance, words of affirmation. That's my number one. And my wife knows that. And, and, and I always joke around and I always say, man, my wife is my hype girl. No matter what I'm doing, she's like, come on, babe, you could, you could do it. I'm like, I'm like uh, fixing something. Oh, that's awesome, babe. I know she didn't really care. She's, oh, that's awesome. You know, or, or for instance, like anything that I'm doing. I'm talking about whenever I wrote the MS-150, like she was my hype girl. Like she was there. She was like call, texting me like, hey, are you okay? You got this, you got this, you know. And she even drove from uh, Houston to, to Austin just to see me at the finish line. Like, hey, you got this. Like you can do this. Like, come on, keep going. You can do this. And, and, and she knows that I need words of affirmation. And she knows that's my love language. Like that's what's going to fuel me, right? She knows. And so, even to the point where she knows if I'm having a bad day, words of affirmation. Even if, well, while I'm sermon prepping, I'm like, oh man, like, I'm having, I'm having like a block right now. Like, I need, she's like, you can do this. You're called to do this. God's got your back. You can do this. You can do this. And I'm like, yes, I can. And I'm like, you know? And, and she knows the words of affirmation that I need, and she's showing that greater love. Because that's the same thing that our father does. Whenever we need words of affirmation from our father, he tells you, you're beautiful, you're great, don't worry what they're saying, I believe in you, you're called to do this. That's what our father does. Words of affirmation, he gives that to us. If you're feeling down, ask God. I just need some words of affirmation, please. Say, like, yeah. You're beautiful. You're called to do this. You were made to do this job. I know it's not easy, but you can get through it. I'm here for you. The words of affirmation. That, 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 that's him. That's what God's trying to do. And, and I think about it, and if he's constantly affirming us, we look at Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. And he's telling you straight up, hey, don't worry. I know what your future is going to look like, and it looks bright to me. And he's giving you words of affirmation. No, I'm everything's going down, my family's doing bad, my job's doing bad. No, no, no. I already have the plans for your future, and you look good, don't worry. Everything's looking good. We think that words of affirmation only apply towards a couple kind of thing. But I have a relationship with my father, and he's doing the same thing for me. I have a relationship with my father, and he's doing everything for me. And I, and I, and I think about, I think about the, the, sec, the second um, love language is acts of service. Right? When we, when, when we think of acts of service, how, how, how can we serve people? Right? How, how can we serve people? We're doing something for another person over and above the regular routine. Acts of service. Acts of service. That, that may be one of y'all's love languages. And, and the importance of when I go through these love languages, figure out which one is yours. And if you want to go home and you take the test, it's, it's, it's an easy kind of survey thing, and you answer questions, you figure out what your love language is. You know, and... and, and just a little plug right here. This is not like marriage counseling or anything because I haven't been married for a long time. But I will say that my wife and I, we hardly ever argue. Hardly. And oh, you're still in puppy love. Like, no. Nah. We love each other, you know, and, and we know what our love languages are. And so when I know that my wife's going through a, a difficult day, 
and I know that her, her love, and I'm skipping a little bit, I know, and I know that her love language is, is, is physical touch. All I do is I just go, I go to her, and we have a saying, hug it out? She's like, yeah. And she comes, and I, and I hug her. We hug it out, and, and then we don't say a single word to each other. I just literally just stand there, and she hugs me, and I hug her, and we just stand there. That is literally all she needs. That's her love language. Sometimes, and I'm sorry for skipping, but sometimes that's what we need from God. Sometimes we're having such a bad day, and, and I don't know if y'all have had these days before. I've had some bad days where I just go into my car, and, I'm just, and I just let out a scream. I'm like, oh, like I need, Jesus, help me. You know, where I'll go home, and I'll just close my door, and I'll grab a pillow, and I'm like, ah, like, you know, like when things just go wrong. Like, and, and, and now I know, Jesus, can you just hold me right now, please? Like, just give me some peace right now. Just hold me. Just wrap me in your arms. I guarantee you he'll do it. He's a prince of peace. He'll come right over you like that. He can do it. I guarantee you. All right, let's get back. Sorry. Acts of service. When I think of acts of service and I think about our relationship with God, he's constantly ready to serve you. We think that we're always serving him, but actually when we look at Scripture— Mark 10, 45, for even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. We think that, that his first initial plan was, I'm going to come down here and everybody's going to come worship me. Actually, he came and he came to serve us first. He loved us first. That's the message I spoke last week, is he loved us first. He came on this world to love us. He already knew, I'm coming to love them. I'm coming to love them. See, when we, think of, when we think of being ready to serve, readily available to serve, maybe that's what some of our neighbors or our friends or our family members need. Maybe that's their love language that we need to show the greater love. And what I'm saying is that the greater love that we have from God, he does every single love language for us. And maybe that's just something that our neighbors need. Maybe they need an act of service. Maybe you need to go, hey, you know what, like, I see that, like, you know, I see that, Let's just say, I see that your grass is a little high. I'm cutting my grass already right now. You want me to cut your grass? They'd be like, what? This is never heard of, you know? And you just, no, I can do it. Or, or, or you see somebody that's struggling with, with something at their house. Like, hey, do you need some help with that? Like, I can help you out. And, and, and maybe that's the act of love. Maybe that's the greater love that they need to see to change their life. Maybe that's it. And then, and then we go down. And, and we, we, think about, we think about gifts. We think about gift giving, giving someone a gift, showing that you were thinking of them, a gift. And, and how does that relate with God is, man, my father every day is looking to give me a gift. My father from heaven every day is looking to give me a gift. He always, he always surprises me somehow, and, and he literally always surprises me with a gift. And it's always the exact gift that I need at the right time. And and. and what was one of those gifts? For me, one of the gifts that, that I needed to receive from him was that when I first, when I first moved into this house, I, I thought to myself, like, man, like, I, I don't even know if our, our finances are going to line up for this house. Like, you know, I know that we have enough and everything, but then when I look at it and all the things that we need to do, like, I don't know if it's possible. You know, like, I really don't know if it's possible. And actually— <laughs> I'll, I'll be honest, actually one of the best gifts I think that God gave me during the situation or God gave my wife and I was we had great real, real estate agents. Now, that was a great gift. They coached us through every step of the way. Like God provided, they're Christians. They, they, they go to our church and God provided that for me. And, and they, they were constantly there and, they were, and how I knew they were a gift from God. Every time I wanted a house or every time Jeannie and I wanted a house and the door closed, they always responded back to me. Oh, I'm not like, oh, too bad. You know, their response was no, because God has greater for you. God has greater for you. Don't worry. Let's go. I think we looked at like 15 houses every time we went with them, like a lot. Like it was like we walked in 20 seconds. Nah, this is not it. Another one. Nah, this is not it. And we did it for like almost like what, three months or so. But yet at the same time, I knew that they were a gift from God because they, they would constantly reassure me. No, don't worry. God's got better for you. God, but I'm like, this house is so great. No, no, God's got better for you. God's got better for you. And I knew that that was one of the gifts from God. And actually, another gift from God that, that he, is, he has given me is that, my, honestly, I, it's my neighbor, like Eugene. That was a gift. And the reason why and how I knew that that was a gift is because I asked God. I said, God, if you, I, I need to make a difference in my neighborhood. 
And he gave me a gift as in my neighbor Eugene. And the reason why I say that is because the relationship that we have, that gift of Eugene being in my life now is that God has shown me, I told you it's easy to be able to reach out and make a difference. That was a gift. That was reassurance in my life. Let's look at the next one. Quality time. He's looking for quality time to spend with you. Quality time is to invest by just listening or communicating beyond just being there. Quality time. Quality time is not, let's watch, a movie, let's watch a movie together and sit on the couch and not talk to it. No, quality time is spending time with each other purposefully. That's quality time. There's quality behind that. God shows his greater love to us by spending quality time. He shows that quality time, how we, we sit down and we talk and we pray and we worship with him. And during that time that we purposely sat down to sit and talk with him, he does the same to us. And he sits and he talks to us and he says, son, you're going to do great. Son, you're going to do great. You're going to do this. You're going to do that. You know, or, or if he speaks to you in a different way, you know, you're my daughter. You're beautiful in all your ways. No matter what you say, no matter what you think, you're beautiful to me. Or, or what my, or what, what my father says to me all the time is that you were made for this. I knew you before you were in your, born in your mother's womb. I knew you were made for this. I knew you were going to preach one day and you were going to do a good job. I knew it. And that's why I created you to preach one day. That's why. And, and I get that reassurance from my father. I get that reassurance through my quality time with him. When I spend quality time, I get, I get words of affirmation. He, he comes and he serves me and he gives me gifts. When I spend quality time with him, he fulfills all those things. And then lastly, physical touch. Physical touch. A father always wants to touch and empower us. He always wants to give us a touch of his glory, a touch of his power to fulfill the things that we need in our lives. And he's always trying to do that. And he's waiting to just give you that touch. But for some of us, Physical touch may not be your love language. So whenever you come up to the altar, you get a little awkward. You're like, ah, oh, this is, huh? But God's trying to show you, no, no, no. Let me, let me fulfill your love in every aspect of, this love, of these love languages. Let me show you all of them. Let me show you all five of them. That's the greater love. And I guarantee you this, is when you feel the touch of the Father, when you can feel his presence on your life, and it's like never before that greater love that he wants to show you, that peace that he brings over your life, that greater love that he has for you, like never before, like never before. So as I end out this message today and I talk about the greater love and I've, I've been speaking about the love languages of how God shows it to us so that we can show it to others. As we talk about these things and I want you guys to reflect and think, God's doing something this year but what are you doing about it? God's doing something this year, but what are you doing about it? God showed you his love. Who are you showing it to? And it should be a challenge for us. If you want to see a multiplication, then you've got to reach out to somebody and show them love. If you can truly believe in your heart that he has the greater love beyond all loves of this world, that he has shown you the greatest love of all, why hold it for yourself? Show it to others. Why hold it for yourself? Show it to others, that greater love. You want to make a difference. You want to see a difference at work. You want to see a difference at school. You want to see a difference at church. Go out and show greater love. Go out and show greater love. I know that the place that you work at, it, it's been difficult. It hasn't been easy. And, and, the, and then the people that you work with, your coworkers, man, they're the hardest people to work with. Show greater love. Think about it yourself. And I'm not easy either. And God shows me love still. It's not, I'm not easy, and God still loves me. He still shows me, he still gives me words of affirmation. He still gives me quality time with him. He still touches me and empowers me. He still gives me gifts. He still serves me, yet I'm not even perfect, yet he does that for me, and that's the greater love. We're not perfect, yet God wants to show the greater love for us so that we can reciprocate and show it to others. That's how we're going to multiply the kingdom. Not by judging others, but by loving others. And not by picking and choosing whose feet you're going to wash, but getting down and knowing it doesn't matter if this, these people are going to hurt me. It doesn't matter if these people, I already know they're going to, I'm still going to love on them. 
I'm still going to love on them. And I know your situation at home may be difficult, and I know the situation at home may not be, look easy, but I guarantee you, if you show love, if you show the greater love in that house, and you allow God to work in your heart, to show that love to whoever needs that love, you'll be able to stand tall at the end of the day and say, he did that. You'll be able to say, my God did that. I don't know what your current situation looks like. I don't know what it's like at home. I don't know what it's like at work. I don't know what it's like at school. I don't know what's happening. But I guarantee you this, my God, your God knows exactly what you're going through. And he knows exactly how to fix. And he knows exactly the type of love language you need at that moment. All you got to do is ask him, God, show me. God, help me. God, help me. God, I, I don't know what to do at work. I, it's, it's difficult for me to work with these coworkers. Actually, it's so hard. I, I really, my boss is so difficult. I don't know what to do. Show love. Show love. I don't, it, it's, it's so hard at home. You know, I, I, I feel like my parents, like they're, they're not working out. I, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to teach them. Show love. Show them, show them, show them love languages. Teach them that the love languages is not just about them, but God showed them these love languages first. You can't give out love if you haven't received love. You got to receive the love from the Father. You got to understand that God has this true love for you. God has this greater love for you. And if you can get a hold of that and you can understand that that love is for your life, you will understand and have the joy and you will have just a happiness to want to share it to others. But if you don't have that love in your heart, you can't give it out. You can't give what you don't have. But I guarantee you today, if you tell God, God, I, I, I want to receive your love. I know what it's like, God. I know, I know what your love's like, but I've been far away. I want to receive your love again. Restore my life. Change my life. Help me to understand your, your greater love so I can show to others. Help me to understand your love so I can show to others. I want to multiply your kingdom. I want to bring people to church. I want my family's life to change. I want my, I want my school to change. I want my, my, my workplace to change. Okay. Then receive the Father's love so you can give the Father's love. Let's go ahead and stand up, church. God, we thank you so much for the greater love that you have shown to us. God, that you didn't have to do that. You didn't have to show us the love. You, God, I know that I've turned my back. I know that I, I, I haven't had faith all the time, and I know all those things, yet you still love me. And, and I don't have an understanding, a true understanding of why you did that, nor do, do any of us, but yet at the same time, you said, I don't care. I still love you no matter what. That love that I have for you, my children, that love that I have, and I feel that that's what God's saying, is that if you're in here and you feel like you don't understand what I'm talking about, you feel like you don't understand why your life is how it is, and you don't understand why you can't love on people or why you feel like you're not lovable yourself, receive the Father's love today. Receive the Father's love today. God, I I'm sorry. I'm sorry for what I'm doing, God, but I want to receive your love. Go ahead and just speak to God right now and just ask him, God, I want to receive your love. I want to receive an understanding of your love right now. I guarantee you, he's going to show you right now. Holy Spirit, I ask that you move right now. Move in this place. Show your love. Show your love. Show your love. And through that love, he has forgiveness. And through that love, he shows you joy. And through that love, there's peace. Holy Spirit, I ask that you meet every need of every person in this room. I feel like God's giving me this word for someone out there that you've grown up and it's been difficult for you to receive love because the love that you received either from your, your parents here on this world was actually hurt. That it actually wasn't love at all. It, it was hurt and it was pain. But God wants to tell you that that's not the kind of love that he wants to show you. He wants to show you a love that's unconditional, a love that you don't have to earn, a love that you don't have to work for, a love that's free, a love that changes everything. And, and just, just a little bit of his love in your life will change everything. But he's not holding back. He doesn't want to just give you a little bit. He wants to give you all of it. And that's why he died on the cross is because you were worthy of his love and you were worthy for him to be in your life. And he loves you and he cares for you and he wants the best for your life. Holy Spirit, I ask that you just meet everyone's need right now. 
meet everybody's need and show them that love. Show them that love like never before so that we can go and multiply your kingdom. God, I thank you for this word that you have given us. I thank you for the greater love, Lord, because I can stand on this stage and declare that you did that, that you changed my life, that you changed this world. And I know and I can stand here and say that this church will multiply and you did that. And I know that I can stand here and say more children will come and you did that. And I know that I can stand here and say that the children's wing will be built because you did that. And our finances will line up because you did that. And I know, Lord, that I can stand here with trust and with faith and, and as solid as can be and say, my God can do that. And I thank you so much for that. I thank you so much for this encouraging word that we can live and know that you love us that much. And that's the reason why you died on the cross is because the greater love that you have inside of you, you put inside of us so that we can show that love to others. Holy Spirit, I ask that you protect us on our way out. God, and just let us show love to one another as we walk out of this place. God, not just the love inside of this church, but the love outside of these four walls, Lord, that we'll be able to show love to every person we come in contact with. In the name of Jesus, I declare just greater love to be shown in this place. In Jesus' name, amen. Guys, thank you so much for coming to our service. You are always welcome here at VBC Houston. If it's your first time, thank you for coming. We will see you guys next week. If you need prayer, please come to the altar.